Support this podcast via our Patreon and get more writerly goodness. Visit patreon.com slash nanocast to join up. Welcome to NaNoWriMo Every Month. My name is J. Daniel Sawyer. I'm the author of some 20 books, 34 short stories, and numerous articles and other things, and I am your guide on this journey to use NaNoWriMo to level up to professional output levels. As you enter day seven, I'm going to take a moment out to talk about setting. We've been talking a lot about characters and a lot about stories and a lot about problems. We haven't talked a lot about setting. There's two classes of setting. The question of whether your setting is pedestrian or exotic. And then there's the question of whether your setting is concrete or vague. Both of these questions are important. An exotic setting is something that is unfamiliar to the reader, not necessarily to you. It's unfamiliar to the reader, and it's a way to cheat, basically, into generating interest for your reader, because people like going new and interesting places and seeing stuff they've never seen before. If you've got your book set in a place that most people don't go, doesn't matter whether it's backstage at an airport or backstage at a courier company or off in the mountains of Bali or in a tourist resort in Dubai or in a space station far above the Earth or in a space vessel going off to Alpha Centauri or in orbit around a black hole or back in the ancient Roman Empire. Any place that you know well and can convey to the reader that will be outside their normal experience that gives you an automatic in, because people are interested in exotic, new, unusual things. And to pull that off, you need to tackle the other problem of setting, that of a vague setting. Now, this is something that is not unique to the beginning writer. This is something that some writers fight with continually all the way up until their career ends. I've got 20 books under my belt, and setting is a constant battle for me because I wrote screenplays, and with screenplays, the dialogue matters more than anything else. In novels, dialogue matters, but you actually have to supply the setting. You can't just leave it for the director of photography and the director to and the actors to provide your visuals and your other sensory cues. You actually have to do it yourself. When you write a book that someone else reads, you're creating sensory impressions in their mind, emotional impressions editorial impressions, smell, sight, touch, sound, pressure, tension, all of these things go into your setting and they create the environment that your action is happening in. And it doesn't have to be pages and pages of description. You can sum up your setting in a concise, dense way without ever drawing attention to it. And there are some writers out there that are really good at that. Stephen King pops to mind. Ian Fleming was one of the pioneers of this kind of writing. It's not easy to learn, but it is gorgeous to do, and it's very satisfying to pull off. And you do it by using details that convey more than one thing at a time, like scrambled eggs. Well, they have a taste, a look, and a texture. Oranges, particularly an orange that's being peeled open, that has a smell that just fuses everything, and it's the kind of smell that affects people emotionally. And you don't have to pack all the description in one solid block. All you have to pack up front is enough to orient your reader, and then you just keep dropping details, incidentally, as you go along, to reground your reader in the experience through the eyes of your point-of-view character. And that last bit is maybe the most important, because the way your character sees the setting is much more important than what the setting actually is in terms of your effectiveness telling your story. Someone who has just been converted and is in love with their new religion is going to walk into a church and find it a whole different kind of experience than someone who has been sexually abused by a priest or someone who finds religion to be offensive and upsetting and immoral and blames it for the great atrocities of history. And all of these people are going to experience a cathedral different than someone of another religion who walks into a cathedral of this strange religion. That person might either, depending on their attitude, might notice that the iconography is beautiful but doesn't have a real emotional connection to it, or they might find it offensive and find it idolatrous and blasphemous. 
and that may really upset them and that may make the whole thing look ugly to them or they may have a sort of universalist bent that makes them take in all this foreign religious iconography and project themselves into what it's like to be a believer of this other religion and wonder what kinds of things they could learn about their own spiritual experience from this other religion and each of those characters will see that same cathedral as a completely different place and the way they see that place controls the mood of your reader as they're reading about events that are set in that location and as your character's mood changes the way they perceive that location may change as well which will then change the mood of your reader as they perceive events through this other perspective from the same character for most kinds of stories the richness of your setting will make or break your readers experience and they may make or break your ability to hold on to the central plot and character threads in your novel because the better you can see and feel and experience what's going on the less you're going to have to push yourself in asking what happens next the best way to write a novel is when you are so in the moment that you're just watching it happen and conveying it to your reader. I'll see you tomorrow. NaNoWriMo Every Month is written and presented by J. Daniel Sawyer and produced by Artistic Whispers Productions. Visit our website at NaNoWriMoEveryMonth.com and leave a tip in the tip jar to support this podcast. NaNoWriMo Every Month is copyright 2015 by J. Daniel Sawyer and Artistic Whispers Productions and released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License.